Welcome everyone to the Laboratory Church. Our mission is to experiment together to build beloved community, creative worship, and brave spaces to heal from trauma and disconnectedness. I pasted our worship bulletin in the chat link and feel free to mute during the service. And if you would like to turn off your video, that is of course acceptable. Just check in at the end with us. I see most of you have changed your pronouns. Thank you for that. I did wanna say as far as a content warning goes, today we will be talking about lament. And in the spirit of lament, we will be talking about grief. So if this difficult topic brings up anything for you, please know that we are here with you and we will chat with you and talk with you after the service. And if you need any immediate conversation, feel free to use the chat room until we can speak at the end. We light these candles as a symbol of entering a sacred space together with the fire of the Holy Spirit as our guide and mediator. Take a moment to get comfortable. Close your eyes and settle into this moment. As the deer longs for running streams, so I long, so I long, so I long for you. A thirst my soul for you, the God who is my life, when shall I see? When shall I see, see the face of God? As the deer longs for running streams, so I long, so I long, so Oh. 
When I was growing up, anytime I got hurt, I would employ a special tactic to help get me through the pain. I would use this technique for times that I knew pain was coming, like when I was gonna get an allergy shot, or after unexpected injuries, like the time I shut my finger in a car door and had to dig the keys up out of my pocket to unlock the car door to get my finger out. The process was pretty simple. I'd hold my breath and clench my whole body as tight as possible. I believe that if I utilized this strategy, I could avoid any negative effects of the trauma that was going to happen or that had already happened. I believed I could avoid the pain by ignoring, by ignoring it or wishing it away. <laughs> Even as I describe this to you all, uh, I kind of laugh at how ridiculous it sounds, but it, the truth is I still do it to this day kind of prepare myself for some injury that I'm about to receive. And I go, I mean, the truth is there aren't many of us who want to actually talk about painful things. You know, we try to avoid the pain and discomfort and tension at all costs. And the United States culture, before I can only speak to the U.S. culture, I know we are a binational church, the United States and Canada but I can only speak to the United States culture that many of our disciple siblings live in, live in one that says, uh, just grin and bear it or put on a happy face. This culture rewards us for ignoring our pain and idolizes those who are tough enough to withstand their own emotions. This culture rewards us for not having difficult conversations and elevates those who stick with pleasantries. But the trouble is, that way of being is killing us. And in the process, it is rubbing away at the image of God that resides within each of us. You see, we were not created to be people who survive. We were not created to be people who just barely make it. We were created by the divine to be in relationship, to be in honest, truth-telling, life-giving, justice-seeking relationships with God, others, with the creaturely and non-creaturely world, and with ourselves. And to be in relationship means we must have the courage to be honest, about what we're feeling, bold enough to cry out. And there's just some pain that is too deep to be masked with niceties, some trauma that requires us to cry out and express the depth of our grief, clenching our bodies and holding our breath and hoping that it will go away won't change the reality of what we're facing. And speaking about the murders and unnecessary deaths of too many Black men, women, people, children, and families, the Reverend Dr. Renita Weems says there are some things that make no sense. And the Bible has a way of handling the things that make no sense. You scream and you cry out. You scream and you call for the weeping women and let them lift up a wail because some things make no sense. We can find the model that the Reverend Dr. Weems describes within many of our holy texts, but it is especially rooted within the Psalms and more specifically within the Lament Psalms. Brash and brazen, in your face, plain and honest. The lament psalms don't try to pretty up or pretty up pain or cover up despair. The rawness expressed by the psalmist is so visceral that many are uncomfortable with these poems. 
And I wonder if this is one of the many reasons why the revised common lectionary opts to skip these passages. And you see a lament psalm is different because it not only cries out to God, but often calls out God as the source of the psalmist's pain. A lament is a legitimate complaint of faith to God. A lament does more than complain, though. It seeks to it seeks change from God. Psalmist doesn't hide the fact that they are hurting, and they trust God enough, trust in their relationship with God enough to tell God their truth, all of it. The uncomfortable, the, un the unpretty, all of it. They tell God all of it. Vulnerability researcher and writer Brene Brown describes the process that many of us are struggling with right now. Many of us are overwhelmed and needing support trying to hold it all together while the world seems to be crashing down. Brene Brown says, it's okay to feel. I think we're experiencing grief, she says. Grief and fear and anxiety, uncertainty and vulnerability. And the only way through that is to acknowledge it. If we spend all of our energy and effort trying to pretend that we're okay when we're not, then actually, and it's counterintuitive, but that's actually the thing that's keeping us from being okay. Lately, I have been watching um, a show that lets my mind rest. I'm wondering if you have any of these shows that you watch that just kind of let your mind go to ease. And one of these for me is one of these veterinarian shows. Uh, and the one I've been watching is about a vet who is a doctor and she's one of the only doctors in the Yukon. I find it fascinating to watch her carry out these complex procedures on thousand pound creatures in the middle of the bush. Mostly by herself, she travels from remote town to remote village, setting up pop-up clinics to help farmers and ranchers and families care for their pets and their livestock. In each episode, there seems to be this predictable pattern. She arrives and hears the concerns of the owner. She does a bit of investigating and identifies what she thinks is the issue. Oftentimes there is this wound or a cut or a lump that has been created by what she calls a foreign body. Slowly and carefully, she cuts open the lump, drains the infection, cleans out all that gunk, and allows space for continued healing to happen once she is left. She's fully aware that if left, the infection will kill the animal. So it must be addressed, no matter how gross, no matter how uncomfortable, no matter how smelly it is, it must be addressed or the animal will die. As a white, queer, anti-racist ally, I know that our world has been dealing with an infection, a virus of our spirit, of our government, for far longer than this current pandemic. The sin of racism has infected our body and is killing all of us. Black, Indigenous, Asian, Latinx, Pacific Islander and Middle Eastern bodies, hopes, dreams, and lives bear the weight of this sin. As a white person, it's been easy to ignore the pain far too long, to ignore the trauma that white supremacy, white nationalism, and colonialism have caused our siblings of color. For far too long, we put band-aids on what needed to be debrided 
We haven't opened up the wound. We haven't let it drain. We haven't inspected the depth of the infection. As white people, white people of faith, we are in danger of losing our very souls, especially when we ignore the harm that has been caused to God's beloved children. And you see, we all bear the mark of God, the Imago Dei, the image of the divine. And if we as white people ignore the harmful and violent structures that our siblings of color face, we are ignoring not only their suffering, but the suffering of God. We can no longer afford to ignore this foreign body. The body of Christ and the creation of God were never meant to be this divided in such heinous ways. Like the psalmist, we must have the courage to honestly name what is killing us if we have a desire for healing. For many of us, talking about white supremacy is uncomfortable. And yet we spend all this time and energy trying to tell ourselves that it's okay, that things are getting better, thoughts and prayers. When we spend so much time and energy telling ourselves that things are okay when they're not. Like the psalmist, we must trust in one another, trust each other to have these difficult conversations. For it is only through looking directly at the pain acknowledging the reality, naming our suffering, believing someone else when they tell their own story of struggle, is only then that we truly begin to heal. Amen.
Now will you join with me in a time of communion? If you have gathered bread and juice or wine, please be prepared to take it together. So today, in our focus on lament, Dr. Amber Churchill focused on several of the things that we are mourning culturally. But today, I also want to name the personal sorrows that so many of us are facing. Because just as we are to share in love and joy together, so are we to bear one another's burdens in grief. Today, we lament and grieve the losses of our loving parents, siblings, dear friends. We lament the continued deaths from COVID and too many tragedies to name. And today, we as a specific community mourn the tragic and sudden death of a little girl whom so many of us loved here on the east side of Indianapolis. Some days it feels like too much when the life is ended before it's begun. Those are extra hard. And on these days, I'm reminded why it takes a village to navigate these difficult times. Even when we live to be a hundred, our time here is limited and it never feels like enough time. And even with this, there is an example of comfort that we can find in Jesus Christ. He died at such a young age and also under tragic and violent means. Yet, yet, over 2,000 years later, he lives on. He lives in our hearts, in his teachings, and in the works of love that left an imprint on all of us. As much as each of us so desperately misses those who we have lost, those who have passed on before us, they too live on in our memories and in our hearts. Their spirits have joined with our creator, our creator who is the source of all love. And when we show love to one another and accept love from one another, we are connected with the love of those who have gone before us. We can experience comfort with each other and can remember those we've lost by their love. We can continue to miss them in person while knowing that they are close to us in spirit. And in his short life, on the last night, Jesus shared a meal with his disciples, and after saying the blessing, he broke the bread. And blessed it and said, take and eat and remember me. Likewise, he took the cup and shared it with them, saying, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out on behalf of many. Now Jill will lead us in prayer. Please pray with me. Communion is our ritual to bring us together for a time of remembrance, and reflection on the loss of Jesus being here on earth. We also use ritual for our own personal grief and loss of those we hold dear. 
Let us cherish our community of support during difficult times and lead toward, lean towards Jesus to heal our hearts and give us strength. Amen. Now let us take, eat, and drink together. Will you join with me in the benediction? Today, I will be reading from the end of Psalm 43. Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And I will praise you with the harp, O oh God, my God, why are you cast down, O oh my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise God, my help and my God. Amen. Amen.